G'day everyone. Today I thought I'd have a crack at showing you some of the ways I enter in an entire module or adventure into RoomWorks and uh, here I'm uh, basically running through the uh, the process of starting from the you know the very beginning, starting from scratch, um, taking a PDF and basically transferring that through to RoomWorks. Um, I'm going to be working with uh, a, a small adventure today basically working with one of the Book of Lairs um, that recently came out with the uh, the Tomb of Beasts uh, Kickstarter. Um, so we'll uh, flick over to RoomWorks now and let's see how it goes. Alright, so in front you can obviously see RoomWorks. I'm, uh, I'm on the World Emanac, um, basically just on the front page. Uh, I've just got a random guy selected in front of me. Um, and what, the, what I'm going to start with um, is basically coming over here and making a storyline event. Uh, and this is where I store all of my modules. Um, you can do it any way you like, you can put it any way you like, I just feel like the events is a good section for it. Um, I use the storyline there. And we're going to be using the Book of Lairs, House of Reeds and Whispers. So the House of Reeds and Whispers there, so you can see I've just pasted that into the title. Um, in here, you can see I've used Storyline as my prefix for everything, just so it uh, stays nice and neat. So I'm just going to enter that in the prefix there. Alright. Now, you can see basically uh, most modules will start with a bunch of text, uh, just basically introducing you to the module. Um, we're just going to need to basically copy all of that straight in uh, to RoomWorks. Obviously this is where it's really good to have a uh, high quality PDF so you can cut and paste these things. Uh, but you can see I've just basically gone and grabbed that and you could grab everything that you're going to put in. Um, I might just do this a bit slower though. Grab that first bit of text up the top there. All right. And obviously you can paste multiple ways. Control V, right click paste. Um, but there is another way that's really cool which is the Control Alt V. Uh, that gives this little window here. You can see that that gives you the ability to do unformatted text. So, uh, you can see that this is suitable for characters of 8 levels. That's obviously a uh, GM direction. So we're going to basically convert to GM direction for that one. Alright, then we'll head back over and we'll skip the next bit of text, which goes in the background section. Don't need the actual topic heading. Go here, we'll use the control alt v again, and there we go. That way we don't have to go through and put any enters in. Um, and what I'll do is I'll just show you the difference. Go on, so if I was to just control v this, you can see the real difference there. Uh, basically you need to come through and configure things out your way, um, your own way. Unformatted text. There we go. That's probably the worst one because then when you do it this style, you've actually got to come back here at the end of every line and basically remove all the uh, all the break lines. But we'll get rid of that. I'll show you what it looks like. So we've got the background there. Uh, the background is going to be probably one of the first things that we need. Um, then we're going to come in here. We need something called Galliner's Plea. Uh, we'll go back to RealMorks, and the way I'm going to enter this is actually by dropping down here. Um, I'm going to want to do this underneath the background to match the module. I'm going to add a section below this one, and I'm going to make a custom section. And this lets me actually set the uh, the name of it, which I think is pretty cool. Then I can really have it like match the module. So we'll cut and paste this. I'll cut and paste this in below. Probably could have done this quite quick here, but because I actually had some uh, little formatting bits in it, I kind of wanted to bring that over. All right, now inspecting the reads, we'll do the same thing. So we'll go back over to here. We're going to click at the the bottom one. We're going to add below this. We're going to have a custom section. And we're going inspecting the reads. Again, we're just going to cut and paste this straight in. And you can see the difference there about the different cut and paste styles. 
as they went to look. Yep, that's right. All right. So that's that's basically the front page done. And we'll save our settings there. And obviously this will come off and uh, basically trigger all of the linking. I've already entered in the Tomb of Beasts monsters, so it's already picking up on the red hag. I'll let the red hags all go. And then fantastic, that saves. Now, probably been through this before, but if you want to get rid of these options here, um, there is two ways to do it. You can click up here and go quick edit, remove empty snippets and sections, or there is the uh, the shortcut key to, to trigger that. I usually use the shortcut key because it's quicker. And as you can see, that's basically saved straight out and that's nice and simple. That's it for the tent tree, uh, for the, the top level section. Um, usually on this page though, is what I'll do is I'll put in a map. Uh, so I'm gonna add the map here. I'll come in here, I'm gonna add a section below this one. Oh, where do we want this? Uh, I'll do it this way. I'm gonna add a section below this for a custom section. I'll call that map. Above this, we're gonna basically come in here and put a smart image. Now, you've got picture or smart image, you could use either, but the smart image lets you use the uh, Fog of World or the Fog of War style. All right, we click this little button here. It's gonna save the topic and bring us open to the section where we can upload a picture. Now, I've got the map selected here. How big is that? Yep, that's all of it. So we're going to copy the image, come over here and paste from clipboard. All right, here we got something interesting. So the data is too large to load into RealWorks. Maximum size is 30,000 kilobytes. Um, yep, that's fine. We'll get rid of that. And what we're going to do is we'll open up Paint. paste it into the paint. And you can see the reason why it's really bugging out is because it's so large. And what we'll do is we're just going to save this as a JPEG because it makes it smaller. Alright, then we'll come back over to Roomworks. Uh, we'll actually load it from file this time because we want to get that new map that we just made. Oops. Yeah, let's go back one. Alright, so it's saying here that again that there's an error message and it says basically the image is very large and it's telling you the pixel size. Uh, it says RealWorks may experience problems and I can tell you right now it does. Um, it can be really slow to load, it can crash out um, and I'd seriously recommend paying attention to this error message. Um, and you can see there it's got the limits that it likes to work with, so 4096, 3072. So what we'll come back is we'll come back into Paint and we're basically going to go through and uh, check out what we need. So 4096, um, we're going to maintain the aspect ratio. Um, we're going by pixels. All right, so if we do 4096 on that end, that gives us 6140, which is still too, too much. So we need to go 3072 on the vertical. All right, and you can see that's basically saved that. Save the changes, cancel that, and we'll basically come in here and get the map again. All right, and there we go. Now it saves with no error messages whatsoever. Um, and, you know, you've resized it, but you've still got the ability to resize it and make it larger or smaller within RealmWorks. So it's not an issue that you need to really be concerned about. Um, listen to the error messages in RealmWorks and do as it says, and you'll have a much better time. I've, uh, I've tried to ignore it. It wasn't a good idea. All right, so that map is now in. Fantastic. If we click on our House of Reeds, you can see here we've got some basic high level information, we've got our map there, and we're now ready to start entering things. 
Now, this is where you, you need to basically stop, in my opinion, um, and figure out everything that you're going to need. Um, so we can see um, in a normal module, I would actually skip to the back of the book. Um, and I would start looking at the items that are unique to the module, uh, the monsters that are unique, the NPCs, um, and all of the chapter names. And that's the things that you want to enter. Now, the reason you want to do that is because once you put something into Realmworks, obviously the linking is going to snatch that up and start basically using that to create more links within your content. So, you want to go through and you want to create things like main floor, um, cellar, so that when it actually recognizes it, it creates a link. Or in this case, I would be creating Leori and Ijith, uh this guy here, Needles. I'd be creating these things actually within Realmworks first. Then all of this content will link through to it and you can really use that. So, let's have a quick look here. Let's have a think about what we need to do. Um, for any DMs amongst us, you should be basically seeing right now that this is a great way to prep because right now you are you're, you're learning the module really well. So just to run through what I'm doing there, I'm going to go create contained topic underneath my house of reads. I'm going to create a people topic uh, and a cast list. So we'll create the NPCs and monster list. Sorry, I must have clicked the wrong one. So I'll just move that down there. Just click and drag. Very easy to do. Uh, now I've got my MCs and monsters list. It's absolutely not necessary to add this, but what this is is a great way just to basically contain things underneath a bucket. Um, and now I can come through and basically put in my individual. So I'll put Leori in there. This Jith guy. My computer has a lot of trouble with this PDF. I think they tried to put too much artwork in it or something. Now you see here that what I'm doing is just basically creating uh, high level topic names. I'm not creating anything else. And that's, that's because I want the names to be linking. Uh, I don't want the content I create once I create the name to not be able to link from anything else it might need to link from. That's an item. So items, we're going to go things, like an object collection or a thing list. change that to an actual named object. Okay. It's a gowners here. You see, I'm really just looking for NPCs. Anything that you might actually need to be able to sort of fluff out a bit further, you can come here and, and put this through. Obviously, this is quite a simple module, so there shouldn't be too many. All right, so got our NPCs, got our magic items, everything will now link to that. What we do now is we come through and go create contain copic. Uh, I do this as a scene. 
Um, and basically what we want to do is start with the yard and the porch scene. We come down here, on the main floor, and we need a cellar. Now, you see here that this is sort of going all over the place, um, and it's basically starting to sort things from A to Z, um, which is cool uh, if that's the way you want to do things. But what you'll generally find in most modules is they're, they're basically sorted by a 1 or a 2 or a 3 or a C1 to C12 or a F2 to C12 or whatever. So basically what you want to cover here is replicate that. So. We have a look. Uh, the yard and porch is one, main floor is two, cellar is three. So we come in here, click on yard and porch, click edit, and put a prefix, do one, make the main floor two, make the cellar three. And boom, straight away you can see this is starting to, to sort. Now if this is not sorting like this, uh, you can basically click in, I think it's this little option up here, or it's that little toolbox, and you've got sort topics, and you can either go alphabetically, um, which should work, doesn't really get the result I want, and I always do mine by prefix, because this is how I set everything up. Alright, so now I've got my equipment, I've got my, my places, and now I need to go in and fill those out a bit further. So, we're going to start with all of this stuff here. Do I want to do it that far, actually? No, we'll come, we'll come and do this top bit. So, that's a um, speak out loud text or read to your party. Um, so, we're going to come over here. We're going to come to the item porch. Click at it. And this summary is where I usually just enter everything, and I control Alt V. That pastes absolutely everything in, and then I come back and go, all right, after the crumbling chimney, I need an enter. Yeah. What I actually pressed then was control enter. And you can see what that did was split this into two separate sections, uh, two different snippet styles. And the reason I want to do that is because this first bit is meant to be a snippet style of read aloud. So now I can basically designate that as read aloud by clicking over the toolbox and go snippet style, read aloud, and boom. That changes the color of it, makes it stand out a bit more to the player. Uh, I need an enter after it is possible. There we go. All right, now we come back. We need something called the shed. Oh, sorry, wasn't meant to click that button. Um, I'm going to start up here. I'm going to go add a section below this one. I'm going to go custom section. And we're going to call that the shed. And we'll come back here and we'll do the same thing. I'm going to grab our text. I'm going to paste it in. It was unformatted text too. All right, see, once again, unformatted text I really don't like because you, you've got to put the uh, enters in uh, or take the enters out of every single bit. Uh, back of the shed. That becomes real loud. And then we got ambush. Click this option here, go add section below this one, call this one ambush, again copy all of our text, control alt v, use the unformatted text as single paragraph option, uh, and put our enter in the eel hounds, control enter to make a separate snippet, I guess snippet snail read aloud. Done. Alright, we got one more called the chimney stalk. So we'll repeat that again.
Now you see on an end of a page here, and there's more text down here underneath, I generally never copy and paste uh, from a PDF over pages because you'll get all of this stuff in here. Press control into there because I know that this is going to be changing over to the uh, talk text uh, DC12. There we go. All right, so we go back and we check this, and we can see that now we've got all of the content for section one into this section. So we come back here, and we save it. We let the links generate, and you can see how quickly that happened. That's done, uh, and now we're going to basically uh, get rid of the snippets. So we go quick edit topic, remove empty snippets and sections, and save that again. And that's just removed everything that we don't need within this actual section. If you want to see what that would actually look like when you're reading it, there we go. Um, and we can see that links have been generated, so eight ill hounds pop up. You can see here I've created the ill hounds topic already. I haven't actually filled that out, but that's uh, something we'll take care of later. And there we go. All right, so now we need to basically repeat that process uh, for everything else. Um, and it's really not hard, so I'll just quickly go ahead and do that now. is free. CF fields in each character. CF fields each character. So we know that one there's a read aloud. There we go. And now we got the collector's shelves. You can see how quick it is once you know your uh, your hotkeys. That's one chunk of text, so that's fine. So that's that section there done. We'll save that. Links. I'm going to ignore the front gate because I can see that's coming from a different storyline that I've entered. Remove all the sections and snippets. There we go, that's number two done. All right, last section for this map. So we've got some read aloud text to start off with. Control enter to make a new snippet. Uh, I always do that if I'm turning the last one into a read aloud, otherwise they both become read aloud if you, you, if you make it read aloud before you create a new snippet. And that can be a bit pain. Alright, combat with Liori and Jith. Gonna add a section below this one for a custom so I can set that custom name. And suddenly three read links. This is obviously just how my brain works. I look for trigger words to let me know where I need to put my enters in. I find it works quite quite efficiently. Read aloud. Okay. 
All right, now we have fibrous masses, a little subsection. And you know, you, you could do this however you want it, you know. I'll show you another way you could basically make this as a control enter, and then just literally come over and control B on your fibrous masses and make it evolve. Since it's not really like a major standout section, it's meant to be a little subheading. I think that makes complete sense. Alright, uh, then we've got the wondrous item. Uh, obviously we don't actually need this to be in section 3. Um, so what we can actually do is come back to Realmworks and we can save this work. Create links to a red hag. You can see it's picking up all my spells because I've got them into my mechanics section already. Now did it make a link over to this item? I don't think it did. Alright, so we'll come over here, we'll get the, uh, the item, find the summary. Alright, and we'll see here, let's check in this, we've got these crimson as a separate section, and this here in italics. Cool. Now, that's, that's entered. Um, it's a wondrous item, they're knitting needles, so what I'm going to do is search Google for a picture to remember. And this is quite simple, we'll paste this from there. Just anything from Google that looks even remotely similar. And we'll save that and then generally what I'll do for something that I think I might want to show the players is I can click these buttons here and that will display uh, when I want to basically go show in player view. Now if you were using the player view, your players were using the player view, you wouldn't do this straight away. Um, you'd probably just do it at the time uh, but it's up to you when you do it obviously. Just going to get rid of all the empty snippets and sections. All right, and obviously there's meant to be a link here for these. So what we're going to do is just paste that name again then. And now we do have a link. We'll clean that up. All right, the only thing outstanding now is the conclusion. And usually the best way to probably do this I'm just going to create another scene called Conclusion. You can see I've already got Conclusion entered somewhere else, that's fine. And I'm just going to call this probably for Control Alt V, put this in again. Save that. So I just really liking red hags. Alright, clean that up. Alright, so now we've got all of the content for our module actually entered into Realmworks. Um, and now it's time to start really using Realmworks to, to its benefit. So we're going to go back to our map and we're going to open that. We can see here we've got a nice player view map. Um, always take the effort to try and find player view maps if you don't have access to them. Um, I know you can you can buy them from the the uh, authors and that sort of thing. It's certainly a good option. Um, you know, I find if you don't have the player view map handy, your players are generally going to catch on to things. But what we're here to do is to add in the options. So we're adding in number one. Uh, we're going to come up here and we're going to put in a pin. I usually use continuous. 
I'm going to click this button here to associate some content. Uh, you can see here that I'm on my mechanics reference. Uh, that's not what I want, so I want to go back to the world almanac. I'm going to collapse everything so it's easier to see. And there's my yard and porch. All right, so you have now linked to that section. Uh, now we'll put number two in. There's number three meant to be just in the middle. All right, now you see that we made number four. So number four is obviously not meant to be anywhere and I generally just put it off to the side um, just so I can click on it and I'll show you how I do that in a minute. Cool. So we save that. And what we now have is the ability to, when we're running our modules, we click on our storyline, we're gonna run this module. Um, we can read through our entry text. We can see that there's a map. And what I obviously do is click this button here to open up the map when I'm preparing to run the module and click this button here. And we're gonna use this for navigation. That's gonna put that over here on the left. It's gonna split our window in two. And now, wherever our players go, we just click the option and we can see what text is there. Really, really easy. So, this is obviously an easier way to do it. Um, and once you've got the text in, you should generally probably have a good idea of what the module is going to be about. Um, I certainly would take my time reading through things as I'm going. Um, and then what I'll do is before the actual session, um, I'll go through and finish off my prep. And by that, what I mean is click on each section and see what sort of monsters are actually contained within that section. So I've got an ill hound that needs to be in here. Um, I'm going to need the ill hound picture. For anyone who's watched my previous videos, you'll know that I like to have the pictures available just so I can show my players what they're coming up against. Um, I actually have a, a monitor that hangs over my DM screen uh, very quickly allowing me to show these things to them. Um, I'm using a program called GreenShot there if anyone's ever seen it that allows me to basically do some pretty cool things with uh, screenshots. All right, so we've got the overview. We're gonna add in a picture. And you can see there that this has transparency in the picture. That's all right, we'll leave that for now. Now, if you do want to see how to enter monsters further, uh, I do have some other videos. Just do a search for my, my monster videos, uh, and that runs through basically how to enter monsters. That is the process you would now follow um, and go through and enter the, the monster completely in the section. Um, and the idea being that, you know, when you're actually running your game, you click on the link, you've got it there. Now, the reason why I do this at the, the time of doing my prep is because six months ago, you know, I got my hands on the Tomb of Beasts or whenever it came out. Um, and all I did is I sat down with that book and I entered in the name of every monster into my mechanics reference section. What that means is now as I go through and prep my content, it's recognizing the names, uh, but I haven't had to go to the significant effort of filling in every single one completely yet. It's just a nice way to make your links work, but without actually having to put all of the effort in up front. Um, I certainly find it a lot easier. So you can see there's my Toma Beasts. You can see most of them will be empty, but the names are there. I strongly recommend this is a great way to do it. So that, you know, when we're prepping right now, you can basically go through and, and take advantage of that. You would go through and do this for every monster. And if you look over here in the contents links, the monsters stand out pretty easily. If you do use an icon, that's obviously easy to identify. Um, I can see here, what have we got? We've got some hags. Uh, 
Alright, so there's going to be some hags in here, but there's a lot of there's actually any monsters in this section, and that's just for the quick view. If you look at the cellar, I can see we've got the child of the briar, and that's fine. So you just go through and you get them prepped. Um, you can see that obviously I've got my spells that are linking as well. You know, if you guys want to go through and put the effort in, you, you certainly can do that to make anything that basically picks up as a link have the amount of content that you want. Uh, there are NPCs in here. So this is where you would come through and you'd fill out your NPC. Um, usually just obviously check the, uh, the content here to give you an idea of what they might look like. Um, this is Brian Smee. I know it's written by Brian Smee, but what is that? I'm going to assume that's one of our bad guys. Alright, so there are two red hags. And that's a red hag. So we've got one picture of red hag. Um, and what you could do here is obviously use that picture as a portrait for one of the players. Oh, I really don't like that they've done that. So Toma Visa made everything with transparent backgrounds and it's, it really doesn't work that well for what I'm trying to use it for. So what I'm going to actually use here is just going to do a cut and paste with Greenshot, which is an open source free software by the way. And I'll open that in their image editor. And one of the benefits is you can actually uh, come in here and use that to set your colours to the same colour as the background. I'm just getting rid of the text and I'll copy that. Straight over. Uh, again, I always put in a little summary of what the actual issue is, uh, what the actual content is when I'm doing a picture. Now, the reason for that being is when I click this button here, it creates its own tab. Now, if that just had the name, that I wouldn't know if I was on this tab, if that was picture or if that was the actual content that I was clicking on. So I just find it easier to have a pick there, um, especially since it takes so long to change tabs. All right, um, and then you'll do the same thing with uh, Lowry, uh, fill them out, and you could come in here and basically, usually if you read through the content of a module, it has some details on the NPC. I will usually fill that out into this section here. That, that's the goal of that ability. Um, I would create my Hero Labs portfolio for her just like I do with a monster. Again, check out my monster videos, um, and that's uh, using the custom monster race template. You can make her statistically whatever you want to look like. Um, reading through the module though it looks like she is going to be pretty much a red hag from the uh, the Tomb of Beasts so you would just basically copy the stats in for that um, there we go and that's pretty much where we need to be um, you're now ready to run the content yeah, that's obviously a small module, very small one-shot adventure. Um, if you were doing something bigger, um, like you, you can see I'm starting to prepare Storm King's Thunder. And you can see I've started coming in and entering all of the details that I'm going to need for that. And you can basically see the, the sort of structure that is needed to do a bigger story. So I've got my storyline heading. Um, I've got the book title if I want to show it to my players. Uh, you can see I go through and do my introductions and then I break it down literally as the book breaks it down. Um, sit down with your index and run it from there. Um, enter all of this first before you enter any content. And that's obviously because especially with the real official modules, is all of these um, named things that you create in your index is generally going to be rewritten again in the content. So as I said earlier, start here, enter all of the names, then come through and do the content. Uh, specifically when you're doing things like your appendix, uh, appendix uh, where you've got all of your magic items, all of your special NPCs, just to make sure that they can actually be linked through.
Um, and another really good tip. So we've got our house of red reeds and whispers here. What we're going to do, see how we've got buttons up here for Prince's Apocalypse and Storm King's Thunder? What these are is when I click that, it basically it's it, it's a custom view that gives me only access to everything that's in Prince's Apocalypse or Storm King's Thunder. You can create these things yourself and you can manage these. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to come over here, we're going to go manage article views. So that's hitting this little article views button. I clicked the wrong one then, sorry. Uh, it's that little button there, topic views. So manage topic views, and you can see here that I created a topic for pretty much everything that I've ever done. Now, these are limited. They, they have a, a certain number of ones that you can do, which kind of sucks, but it is what it is. Um, I'll get rid of the defiance in flam, and we're gonna call that the name of this module. So house of reads and whispers. You can set an icon for it to whatever you want, uh, and you can show it in the ribbon. Now, when you do that, it obviously drops off one of the three. You can only go up to a maximum of three buttons. Click done, um, and now you can click on the house of reads and whispers. Now, you can see here that this is almost completely empty, except for the defiance in flam, and that's obviously because I took over the defiance of flam um, option. So we can actually remove this from there uh, yep so for anyone that missed that there's just a right click go back to our world almanac and now we're going to add the content that we made into that option so house of reads and whispers we're going to assign to view house of reads and whispers assign contain topics and this is one of the reasons why i like to have everything under an overarching single entry is I could do that and it's done and now I can click this button and I have all of the stuff that I need to run this module right there at my fingertips um, it's not messed with all of the other content that I've added into Realmworks it makes it a lot easier to basically find what I'm looking for and it's just neat and easy right so that is an option that you can use uh, it's a pretty good tip um, that is pretty much how you enter an entire module into the tool. Um, don't know if this is going to be any use to you, but I know a lot of people seem to be interested in how other people are sort of structuring their content and their data, so um, I figure this might be interesting for people. Um, if it's not, let me know in the, in the comments what it is you want to see. Have a good day.